Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 Update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 6, 2020, recorded near 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Well, a little bit of a switch up today. We're taking a look here first at the upper ocean heat content values. The sea surface temperature anomalies really aren't any more of any significant valuable uh, information now uh, because we're mainly now getting into the peak of the Atlantic uh, hurricane season. Those water temperatures are going to be warmer than average for the remainder of the season. A better metric now is the uh, upper ocean heat content values, which we're taking a look at here. And again, really anywhere in this, even the lighter shade of blue here, even though it's on the lower end of the spectrum, on the lower third of the scale, uh, supports tropical cyclones. And especially out here in the Caribbean and the Western Main Development Region, once you get past about 50 degrees west here and uh, roughly right near 20 north and south of there, you're really getting into the upper third of the scale, especially out here in the Caribbean where these upper ocean heat content values are literally off the charts here, about 140 to 150 off the charts, literally on the upper third and fourth of the scale. Uh, but this whole area is pretty well supportive in the thermodynamic environment uh, for tropical cyclones. And it really looks like the lid is going to begin to pop off here as we head towards uh, the middle part of August and in through September, it does uh, seem to believe. But again, these uh, upper ocean heat content values, they basically represent the water depth, um, basically your latent heat release potential in the atmosphere. And once these tropical cyclones go over a, a warmer patch, especially like over here, instead of upwelling cooler water from below the surface, they continue to upwell near the same uh, water temperature uh, from down below. And that these values out here in the Caribbean Western Atlantic Basin, very concerning as we head towards the peak of the Atlantic Basin or the Atlantic season. The sea surface temperatures, the actual skin temperatures, there's a CDAS methodology. There's a different methodology of measuring the, the temperatures at the surface. This is from tropicaltidbits.com. And a couple things to point out here. You notice this 26 degree isotherm, basically what you need to support tropical cyclones. And just as a rough kind of uh, isotherm line right here, these areas are certainly more than supportive of tropical cyclones. You notice where the Cabo Verde Islands are, which is right here. That's the Cabo Verde Islands. And like I said, you know, now you can get these tropical waves to come off at about 15 degrees north, and they still will have a more favorable environment in through here as what will end up happening the Saharan air outbreaks that are occurring across this uh, general vicinity, with time they will occur up here and these areas will start to really be uh, come more favorable within the next couple of weeks or so. Water temperatures all the way out here into the Western Atlantic uh, near uh, Barbados and the islands here, 29 degrees Celsius isotherms and water temperatures out here in the Turks and Caicos, all the way to near Puerto Rico, running about 28 to 29 Celsius. So very warm, very supportive for tropical cyclones this time of the year. And that's only going to become more favorable as time progresses. So I'm sure all of you are aware, uh, but the NOAA National Hurricane Center and uh, the uh, kind of NOAA Corps has uh, updated their 2020 uh, Atlantic hurricane season outlook for August 6th. And you can see what they're predicting. They are forecasting an 85% chance of an above average season with about a 10% chance of a near normal season and only a 5% chance of a below normal season. The fact is we're really not going to have a below normal season. And this is certainly almost one of the more confident. This, is, this has higher confidence than a 2017 outlook. And you remember how the 2017 season panned out? Well, this is more than what 2017 had to offer. And their range of forecasting for named storms is 19 to 25 named storms with 7 to 11 hurricanes and 3 to 6 major hurricanes and this really these hurricanes and major hurricanes these are certainly something that we have to keep in mind again you know that would leave us with about even seven hurricanes in total that would leave us with five more hurricanes left to go and that is certainly something that can still it only it only you know it only takes one storm 
And the fact that we could see an upwards of six major hurricanes, which are category three or higher, very concerning. It only takes one. And this is kind of a, a just something that I kind of uh, put into retrospect here. But what you're taking a look at here is the hurricane forecast comparison from NOAA, uh, Colorado State University, and the my own uh, outlook here. And again, I had to kind of skew some of these numbers uh, because you can't really put them into a range, uh, but so you had to kind of round these numbers. Uh, but for NOAA, you can generally see about 20, uh, 20 named with 10 hurricanes and five majors. Colorado State University with 24 named about uh, 5 to 10 hurricane or about 15 hurricanes rather and about six major hurricanes. And then for my prediction, 20 named storms, about 11 or I'm sorry, about six hurricanes and about five major hurricanes. So that is kind of my uh, forecast there over here and then the two official ones from NOAA and Colorado State over here. Just kind of a nice way to put this all in a com comparison. Uh, bottom line is this is going to be a very busy season. These water temperatures out there here are more than supportive and we're only going to continue to get warmer with the upper ocean heat content values certainly very supportive out in this region. So what's going to be going on? Well, we took a look at this yesterday, and we'll start taking a look at this more as time kind of progresses. But what you're looking at here, this is from Michael Ventress, by the way, over at IBM and the Weather Company. Uh, but this is uh, a, a kind of a map looking at your convectively coupled Kelvin waves. And basically in your browns and oranges and yellows here, this is your suppressed phase, basically an environment that typically suppresses Atlantic hurricane development and causes sinking air in the atmosphere. And these blues in here are indicative of your rising air in the atmosphere causing more convection. This typically enhances Atlantic hurricane development. And what you're seeing is now this is uh, crossing over, this active phase is now crossing over the Eastern Pacific Basin where we have an area to watch and we'll get to that here in just a moment. But you can notice that we, uh, in the Atlantic Basin, are under the influence of this uh, suppressed phase right now. And this suppressed phase is likely to continue throughout the next uh, week or so as it slowly retrogades back over to near Africa. As this begins to pull away, you'll notice that right now, this convectively coupled Kelvin wave is passing over uh, South America right now, and this in and, and your Central America, and this will then uh, kind of creep its way over into the Atlantic Basin where it will try to set up a brief window of favorability across the Atlantic Basin. But right behind this, what you don't see off the screen is another suppressed phase out here. So this is kind of just a brief burst but it might be enough to kickstart just a tad bit of activity, and we'll have to watch on the trends for that. But again, the suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave is passing over now, so do not expect any Atlantic hurricane development, at least for the next five days or so. Uh, but after that, we'll have to watch as this uh, active phase of the Kelvin wave passes over. This will typically reduce the trade winds. This will cause a westerly wind event in the Atlantic, which will, again, induce a little bit more warming in the sea surface temperatures. This will also induce uh, a westerly cyclonic uh, event in the atmosphere, a cyclonic uh, wind event that in typically enhances uh, these African easterly waves as they come across here. They enter the cyclonic environment and start to rotate in through here. So we'll have to watch as this uh, active phase kind of passes over. But again, I'm not really seeing much in the way of development with this active phase as a suppressed phase is quickly following right behind it. And again, that will be all retrogating back off toward the east over the next uh, couple of days or so. And this is one other thing that we can really take a look at here to kind of gauge the Atlantic development here. This is our Madden-Julian oscillation, the, the MGO. This is basically your larger scale rising and sinking patterns in the atmosphere. You're taking a look here at the velocity uh, potential at 200 millibars way up there in the atmosphere and your MGO, which is the Madden-Julian oscillation. Your reds and oranges, these are your suppressed Madden-Julian oscillation phases while your blues and purples indicate a uh, active phase of the Mountain Julian oscillation and that typically enhances uh, is another enhancer for Atlantic hurricane uh, development. But what you typically see is we're in this pretty suppressed phase throughout the next uh, about week or so. We're in this phase where you get these larger scale sinking pattern in the atmosphere and again we can still see development during this time as uh, Gonzalo proved 
And, you know, even to some extent, Isaias kind of formed within a, a suppressed phase. But again, generally, we do not see your intense hurricanes form in a... Uh, in a suppressed uh, Madden Julian oscillation phase. But then you notice out here to the week two forecast, this is the 14th through the 20th of August, you have an active phase of the Madden Julian oscillation uh, coupled with an active convectively coupled Kelvin wave that will be passing over more than likely. What you see here is that this, uh, this kind of suppressed phase is rapidly retrograding back over Africa. But in the meantime, you get more of an active phase of the Madden Julian oscillation to first of all enter the uh, eastern pacific basin and then retrograde back over to the atlantic basin and we can take a look at that here in the uh, chi this is your velocity potential in the cfs forecast the climate forecast system not the gfs but the cfs and you're beginning the forecast here at about august 5th and again this is uh, rough this area roughly correlates to the atlantic basin this area right here is the Eastern Pacific and then your Western Pacific Basin and Indian Ocean is over there. So what you're really looking for here is these uh, kind of these green areas. This is your rising air in the atmosphere while your browns are the uh, suppressive phase, your sinking air. And again, what you can really see here is that what you're going to be getting is a propagating a wave kind of over here. You're getting a propagating little wave of energy to enter the Atlantic Basin uh, from right about now all the way up until this goes out to September 2nd. So you're kind of in this suppressed phase right here, but you notice this active phase will kind of begin to retrograde over into the Atlantic Basin, first coming from the Eastern Pacific, retrograding into the Atlantic Basin and over Africa. And then you start to see the hints of an African standing wave over here as we get through uh, the latter half of August and then in through September. And this is one of the things that's really going to beef up the Atlantic hurricane season this year. Combined with this is our Caribbean vertical shear distribution. This uh, black line right here is kind of your mean uh, throughout the last several years. And uh, this goes all the way back through January. This is uh, December over here. And your blue line is currently, or the observed, uh, the observed vertical shear. You notice how it was extremely high throughout the, the last couple of months, but we really tanked down here. The general uh, motion has kind of been a tanking motion all the way in through August. Now sitting at August 6th and below normal. We might peak a little bit above normal with this suppressive uh, phase of the Kelvin wave, but then it's going to quickly tank once again as we head closer into September. And that is certainly one of the things peaking the interest for a very busy line of hurricane season this year. So what's going on out there right now? Well, not much, but in the eastern Pacific basin, we do have this area of disturbance with a 70% chance over the next five days or so. This will be something to gradually monitor if you live uh, out here in the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas in the Gulf of California, the Baja. Uh, of course, that is going to be something to monitor, but again, this should stay away from land. But again, this could be uh, getting close enough to generate some surf and some rough uh, conditions, certainly, uh, if this does become a formidable system. But again, we'll have to uh, kind of have to monitor and watch for any land uh, potential, land threat potential at the moment, but certainly not seeing anything in the model guidance that suggests that currently. So anything in the Atlantic Basin, well what you're looking at here is the GFS 850 millibar geopotential height here. You're uh, looking at the cyclonic spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what you really want to look for is a consolidation and a bundling of the energy like you're kind of seeing way off the screen here in the eastern Pacific. You generally don't see that out even in, in the GFS forecast through about, you know, uh, the middle part of August here. But again, we are going to be watching these tropical waves come across as this area generally becomes more favorable this time of the year. And certainly, we're going to have a very busy hurricane season. One other thing to note is that this big area of high pressure, you kind of notice the extent of this high right here. This is certainly something concerning. This kind of suggests that the general pattern for these tropical waves will be generally towards the west and not allowing these things to turn on out to sea. These will generally be moving westward. And if that pattern does persist, that will be something of deep concern as we head closer to the Atlantic or towards the peak of the season.
As a reminder, this weekend, uh, we're going to be doing something that we really haven't done before on the channel, but uh, we just hit 800 subscribers as of this morning, so thank you all uh, for that. I do greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Your support uh, tremendously helps me and uh, really, honestly, kind of provides me with that extra motivation to keep doing what I'm doing here. Uh, but uh, we are going to be going over the uh, Hurricane Isaias uh, document document. Uh, the data collection it's all going to be put into a um a powerpoint presentation this is actually the opening slide of it right here the uh, hurricane isaias data collection uh we're going to be going over kind of the the general summary of hurricane isaias you know when it formed where it formed uh, etc uh, taking a look at some forecast maps uh, kind of behind it the upper ocean heat content values and a whole lot more and we'll kind of be taking a look at some of the data that I collected uh, personally from our weather station and maybe even throw in some video of what we uh, did, did manage to capture with uh, some of the squalls that did come through the Orlando Metro and we'll be sure to kind of bring that to you guys here this weekend. I don't know a specific date yet probably on Sunday if I had to kind of put my uh, kind of put my uh, rubber stamp of approval on it uh, but if you guys do want to see uh, more of these kind of let me know down in the comment section below uh, obviously go follow me on Twitter at micromally one because I'll be announcing uh, when we are going to do that and I'll also announce it in, in the video updates in the, in the uh, subsequent days. Uh, to follow but again if you guys do want to see this kind of let me know and uh, let me know what you guys really want to see because that really kind of helps me uh, guide everyone and give everyone the best information possible out there so you and your family can stay safe all right hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening of course i am michael romali thank you all for your support it really means a lot to me and really helps i'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon stay safe everyone talk to you tomorrow